Okay, ladies and gents, welcome Loey the Legend time. Around 450, 500 ish Elo. And we've got Ramis Gomia here, or Mila, playing as the Khmer. Uh, I'm going to leave the big trees on, and there's a lot of trees on this one, so be prepared to be obstructed by trees. And then in the blue, we have a player who has been in Loey the Legend cast before. Maybe even multiple times. There's a lot of episodes now, so I kind of forget. I remember casting this guy at least three or four times. There was a period where he'd play a lot with the Goths. There was a period where he'd play a lot with the Celts. And, I, and then I guess he's been on Franks recently. I don't know if it was random or what. But I remember this dude has a really unique way of building up. And it feels like he doesn't play towards Civ bonuses. So, like, you know, if your civilization is cheap infantry, if you're Goths, for example, he doesn't care. Um, they have crappy knights. I remember him making tons of knights with Kelsey. He doesn't really care. So, um, but he might have changed. It's been many, many months since I've seen him, but he seems to always be around the 500 ELO mark. So he's kind of like the gatekeeper at that rank. And I kind of like revisiting players too. So I think there's going to be some things that we get excited about with him. The map is Coastal. And I actually played Coastal yesterday. Uh, and what's funny about Coastal, guys, is that this map was always the map that was recommended uh, as default within Age of Empires 2. So if you go back to the classic even, it'll like default on Coastal. That's always the map that they would give you. And maybe that's due to the fact that it kind of gave you a taste of everything, right? You had some big wood lines, small wood lines, you had some cliffs, you had some hills, you had stone, gold, obviously, you have food. You have water, you have landlock. Like, there's just kind of a mix of everything, which is maybe part of it. But yeah, I, I think it's funny. If you go into... Actually, some people even consider it annoying. Even now, if you go into the lobby and you change a setting, like change a game mode, it'll say, do you want to play the recommended settings for this game mode? And it'll always take you to Coastal. It's, it's kind of stupid, right? Because there's so many different game modes. It shouldn't all be recommended on Coastal, but that's just the default, even still. Which is kind of interesting because this is the first time we've actually seen coastal and rank i don't recall seeing coastal and rank before so anyways when i played this the other day i was astounded at how much how choke pointy it is like it is really hard to move around here my opponent just kind of walled between the cliffs uh which could be a strategy here we are at an elo where i'd be surprised if we see a dock uh, go to fredo is gone for the um and those geese really spread their wings when they die, don't they? It makes me feel bad. Has gone for the all-food start this far. And we had a similar start over here for red. And red going for the straggler trees for wood. Used to get more bent out of shape around this build. I actually don't mind it these days. I understand why players do it. It makes it easy. And yeah, this is kind of what you want to do. You get enough wood then from the trees to make a lumber camp. And then you make it on the trees. That's good. Yeah, I don't mind Coastal. I think Coastal's pretty cool. It is it is something, though, that the devs could definitely improve upon, right? Like, if you're trying to test out game modes in the lobby, and you want to test out Sudden Death, for example, it should say, "What do you want to try the recommended settings for this game mode? And you say yes, and it recommends a good one for that. Like Socotra or something, right? Or um, Hideout is a really good one. So it gives you Hideout, on normal resources. And then it's like, oh, you want to play King of the Hill. Do you want to try the recommended settings for this game mode? Um, What would be good for King of the Hill, guys? Nomad or something, right? Instead of coastal for literally everything. Because I feel like when people are trying things, maybe they don't get the best experience out of the game mode because it's because coastal doesn't necessarily fit. So, so far, scouts are moving around. We're pretty chill here. Um, I believe this is auto scout. Auto scout typically starts on the right side. I think that's why red scout is moving like that. I think blue scout is auto scouting as well. Yeah, so they're eventually going to scout the entire map. And we'll see what these guys want to build up towards. Red's going to take some stone. And then, otherwise, we just see berries and wood right now for red. No farms. Um, no attempts at taking any boars. There is a boar back here. Is there another boar? Can I maybe just not see it? Maybe I missed it. Maybe a boar was brought in. It's super hard to see with these big trees, but these trees do look very, very bright. 
I wonder if playing with Kamur as a beginner player can help you, or not help you, can form some bad habits for you. Because the fact that you don't need your buildings to unlock other buildings or to go up to the next stage, I could see being a bad thing in the long run. It's kind of like if you play with Huns for too long, you go play with other civs, and you're just not used to making houses, which is like a pretty essential part of the game. Just a thought. Let's see if Red's paying attention here. Oh, we have a garrison. There's a blue scout gets hit. And this is important, right? Both players auto-scouting. Both players want that scouting intel. And blue scout lives to see another day. It doesn't look like blue even manually controlled that. It almost looks like that was just auto-scout doing it. And is Red, is Red looking for that thing? I think Red's on the hunt for that scout right now. Hmm. It's going to be hard to find because Blue Scout is always moving. So you'd have to somehow encounter each other. And it also could be that this is also just Auto Scout taking the same path. <laughs> I don't think this is red. I honestly, I think this is just Auto Scout taking the same path because Auto Scouts will do that. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to get thorough scouting, right? <laughs> if Auto Scout wasn't a thing, it would just feel like he's chasing him down. All right. Red is on the way to Feudal Age. 22 villagers. What about you, Blue? Blue has stacked a bunch of houses up against this wood line. So they get some nice shade from the sun in the mornings. No boars being taken here. Now, guys, God Afraid has got a ton of games. I don't know if someone here watching with me could look it up. I think he has over a thousand games. But he doesn't... Like, a lot of people are going to say, uh, How can you... How can you still be at that ELO after so many games? Because some people don't really care about ELO. They just want to play the game the way they want to play the game. Have some fun matches. I don't want to necessarily have hotkeys for everything or have to do this or that. They just want to do what feels right. Even if that is not necessarily right for efficiency. Clearly, though, I think maybe God Afraid is a big fan of the farm bonus with Franks. And we're going to see a bunch of farms here. It's always a little sad if you make the farms in Dark Age. Um, but the wood count's going to be there where Blue could make a bunch of farms. You get the farm upgrade for free with the Franks and Feudal. 2,600 1v1 games. Yeah, see? That's a lot of games, man. As I said before, I've seen this player a lot. And we have covered him before. And if you go through the Loey the Legend playlist, you probably would see that he's been in some of them. But I just don't remember any one specific title. Is that stone? So hard to treat, see with big trees. I think that's stone. Right? These are going to be stone miners? Yep, stone miners. Okay. So, okay. Into the feudal age is God Afredo. And yes, both players are playing from Spain. So, two players from Spain against each other here. Uh, red... Neat little farms. Red is not mining any gold. He's been mining stone. I wonder what the plan is. Red Scout has found the blue's base now. And it's still moving around like it's auto scout, but you could still look here, see what your auto scout has discovered, and formulate some type of a plan. Lots of choke points and cliffs through the middle, like we said. Uh, this area hasn't been fully scouted yet by the auto scout. Maybe that wasn't auto scout because it is actually gone. With intent towards Blue's base, an auto scout would be here getting this instead of going back over there. And we're going to see a tower from Red. Ooh. Okay, so Red's going to tower rush. I mean, this could be such an important hill to control. Now, villagers have a bit of a bonus against towers. So if you just, if, if you saw this in Blue's position, you could just send your villagers and you could batter that down. Five villagers would batter it down. Where it gets tricky, though, is uh, like if the opponent walls in the tower quickly, then you can't really do that or makes another tower next to it. Not something you'd ever expect here. I think like Red is used to players just being scared of towers and will run away from it and not batter it down. Well, look at this build order, though. You can see the experience from Blue. So Blue gets the food from the boar, hasn't made any farms yet, and bam, on the way to Castle Age. The tower has just hit some of those villagers from blue. 
And Blue's going to know that tower's there. That is just such a rough spot. If there's double tower there, it's not going to be easy to deal with. You could see Blue's trying to decide on what to do with these vills. And the answer is farm a lot. So there we go. Place the farms. There you go. Place the farms. Farming away. Farming away. Good stuff. Hey, we're farming. Meanwhile, these villagers are getting hit. Red is actually garrisoned inside of this tower. Villagers will eventually die here. You do have cheap castles with Franks, though, so maybe Blue will just may want to make a castle here. Red is very close to clicking up to the next stage. So, Red chose to go for a longer feudal age, but with some map control. We're even going to see the third tower drop now. Blue's going to have to find some type of way to come back. But Blue's heading this way. Blue wants the stone wall behind this. Interesting strat. Okay. Is that villager going to die to a snow leopard? No. Okay. I mean, Blue is a stable. Blue can make a couple knights. And Blue could probably clear deal with these towers. Or Blue could just send the knights immediately to Red's base. And Red has no defense for that. But... You know, that would have to be an immediate decision. Hard to get everything right all the time. There are the knights from blue. And this is kind of a platform now, I guess, for red's attack. This is red's whole strat. Hold this position. And with this area, we will win this game. Because we're going to deny a lot of resources. <laughs> Blue's going to drop a town center here? Just casually going to drop a town center? Okay, well, my advice would be just delete your mining camp and drop a castle here. There's no army from the enemy to stop it. Get it down with it quite a few vills, and it'll shoot all these towers down, and then you have a defensive castle that also took care of the towers for you. But, you know, there's a new town center for Blue. Blue wants to build up that economy. Got it. Blue is mining some more stone here. Now, I think Red might go elephants or knights right through the middle. I mean, this is all so visible to Red. And Red still hasn't clicked up the castle yet. That didn't dawn on me yet. I guess Red did research bloodlines, which spends 150 food and 100 gold. Okay. Now, Blue could still have time to make that castle I mentioned. So that's an idea. And Blue is four knights. And Blue is also going to wall here. Dude, okay, so guys, one time, and we got a clip of it somewhere, but we never made content with it. And this is going to annoy Hardy, but he's going to see, he's going to hear this later when he's looking through recordings, and he's going to try and find this, and maybe we could do something with it. Maybe it's on short, short channel, actually, but there's a clip, and honestly, Hardy, if we find it, we could maybe put it in to the video here. I was running away with Knights, I think it was, on Arabia. Right? It wasn't coastal or, or uh, what was some of the other maps with cliffs. Anyways, wasn't any cliffy maps. I'm running away, doing a bunch of other things. And I somehow ran into an area like this. I'm not even kidding. Like the units path through there instead of around. Uh, and they got like maybe here when I realized and tried to turn around. But then there was camels chasing me and they were on the other side. <laughs> I was just straight up trapped on a cliff. I really want to see a tower on that cliff at some point from Blue. And oh boy, Blue knows. He knows. He's He's got it down. Red still isn't in Castle Age. Red isn't going to be able to complete this tower. The Knights are quite strong against Feudal Age Towers. And then the castle's going up. So we haven't had any kills or deaths in this game. Now there's their first kill and death. But the castle will go up for Blue. The villagers that built these towers are probably going to go down. And then the towers themselves are going to go down as well. And this is just really good play from Blue. And you could see the panic from Red because Red's like, oh no, my whole strategy was this. So he makes a couple scouts. He's going for men at arms, but Knights beat all of that. I'm curious, and maybe this is to buy time. Maybe Red's just going to toss away this army for now. Just so there's time to do something at home. Because it feels like a defensive castle is needed right now. More than anything, you probably want your own castle. Because if the knights come over to your base, you're in trouble. 
And yeah, like, Blue... He's got a pretty decent position now. As he just drops another town center. This is alright. Took care of that. <laughs> Blue is 65 times as many games as Red. Yeah, he's played a lot of games. But Red has had pretty good gameplay, all things considered, right? Good eco upgrades. It's a good idea to get the towers. I honestly think that the delayed castle age time was the issue. Not bad. Castle's very relaxed. I'm not sure about that. Like, I guess at this elo you get away with it because Blue's not going to immediately counter attack. And Blue just goes, Murder holes! Need to get murder holes because someone might be underneath my castle at some point. Murder holes! Murder holes is on the way. And okay, Red doubled the amount of villagers that was building this castle. I like it. Red's got 37 vills. Blue is 38 vills. So yes, blue is the town centers, but this is 500 elo. That doesn't necessarily mean you're creating out of them all the time. I would love to see Red try and raid Blue's economy. Like, go to the wood line and raid with Lightcap. Like, go somewhere other than the Knights. Players are very direct at this rank, so they don't think about raids as much. But I think that'd be insanely helpful here. We might also see Imperial Age from both. Like, both players are going to have the resources to go up here. They're not really spending any of the resources on eco upgrades or on um, unit upgrades. Right? No blacksmith upgrades for either player. Blue just wants to rid the middle of the map of red's buildings. Blue hasn't been creating vills. Blue probably thinking about Imperial Age. Honestly, really good. Then you get another castle in the middle. And then you can make trebs. It's huge. Are you thinking about this, Blue? Red's making Ballista Elephants. Ballista Elephants are are underrated in Castle Age. They buffed the attack on them many months ago. I forget what they used to have, but they're actually really good in Castle Age. Ten. I think it was eight before or something. You have ten attack and it does pass through damage. And then you've got... 270 HP. Now, what they also are really expensive. <laughs> so, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily make life easy for you, but... Okay, there goes Blue. He's gonna see Red as a castle. And Red's light cav are ready, and Red's gonna kill these, these villagers that are walling here. Blue tried to click the wall, accidentally clicked a tree. I hate it when trees get in the way like that. <laughs> She's still left over, though. She's gonna keep chopping. <laughs> And these villagers are going to go build the wall. They're like, come on, Angela. We knew we shouldn't have given you that job. Yeah, there's, there's no way this wall goes down. If Red is active with the army here, there's no way these walls go down. Or go up, depending on how you look at it. Well, it depends on if the ballistas get involved. Seems like Red's trying to bait Blue into the castle. Blue's like, that's my trick. I know that trick. Okay. And remember, Imp's going to be in for Blue soon. Blue really like to lock this position down. Red, meanwhile, in some er one area, sorry, making some monks. Maybe thinking about getting relics. Red doesn't see this. Doesn't see that one villager there from Blue. It's a sneaky move from Blue. And there is still a hole. Samantha, Angela, whatever I named you, please plug the gap. Okay, well, now you've trapped the knight. Oh, and the knights get trapped! <laughs> oh, God! The knights can't escape. They ventured onto the cliff and they can't jump. Because that would just be too realistic. <laughs> oh, the fact that we actually saw that happen after I mentioned it earlier is amazing. Because he tried to run them this way and the game said, there's a path for you. Anyways, Red is, might not be an imp. Just like Red wasn't in Castle earlier, but Red once again has taken some control. This is a really good game. Now, Blue's going to know there's a castle here. This gets interesting because Blue could make traps on the other side of these walls. So Red would have to do a loop-de-loop -loop this way to get those traps. Which is doable, obviously, but way less doable than being able to just run through this if this choke point was open. We have Pikeman upgrade on the way for Blue. I imagine we're going to then see Pikeman. We don't have any military for Blue right now. No siege either. Bill count's not really that crazy. Um, Red is on the way to the Imperial Age now. Nine Ballista Elephants, eight 
uh, light calf, and no blacksmith upgrades. Remember before I mentioned, sometimes you might forget those things with the Khmer because you don't need a blacksmith before a siege workshop. You don't need the blacksmith to go up to the next stage. Khmer, you can just kind of freely do whatever. But blacksmith upgrades can be really important. And as I say that, we do have blacksmith upgrades coming in for blue relevant to the infantry that blue is making. Oh my god. We have a transport ship on the way? Dude. Finally, the coast is getting some use. Let's go. Now, there's a bug right now where you can't ungarrison all your units from transport ships. It can only do it one at a time. They haven't fixed that yet. I imagine they will eventually. And in doing so, they will probably introduce 16 other bugs. But it's all right. We're used to the cycle by now. Um... I mean, if blue can maybe castle drop red, red's never looking at home. I can guarantee it. Red's super focused on the fight in the middle. Red has been focused about the middle area for the entire game. Hmm. Okay, so into the transport, red goes. Now, red did just get this relic. And in doing so, would have encountered the mining camp. Probably just didn't notice it, though. And this monk's actually healing up the crew right now. Okay. There's the transport. Oh, they're going to the gold. And notice how everything didn't ungarrison at the same time. <laughs> it's super annoying. Yep, okay. Got it. All right, manually. Next guy doesn't want to... Oh, oops. Okay, well, all right. Yep, there we go. I think Blue's just realized this has been overchopped, or maybe not. I don't know. But Blue wanted to wall that up. That makes sense, because Blue didn't make a gate here, so Blue couldn't actually access that gold otherwise. Guys, Red is making a trap. And after that, even two more traps. And those traps could start to take Blue out in the middle, and I'm really concerned for Blue. We do have fortified wall. So the walls will be stronger, but it just felt like the most important thing when you're an imp faster was to trap this down, and the opportunity was maybe there. Still could try it now if you're blue. But this is as pretty as the houses are looking in your town. The rest of the game is looking pretty bad right now. I just don't think you're going to be able to, to engage against the ballista elephants. And ballista elephants are going to be really good. You got to think, why do you go to the next stage? It's either for eco upgrades or unit types or for unit upgrades. There's reason to go to the next stage. Did Red click the barracks instead of the castle? That's weird. He actually hit the barracks multiple times. <laughs> Gotta clear out the barracks first. Barracks is more important. Those Frank castles are so cheap. We don't even worry about taking them out. They'll just build new ones. <laughs> kind of hitting both. This is at least like woke blue up a little bit. So blue now knows that the opponent's doing this. Also, there's just a casual wall right in towards Red's economy. Siege workshop from Blue. And again, this is a problem. These Ballista Elephants are chonky. Ballista Elephants do some pass-through damage. Ballista Elephants will stop that. We have Treb v. Treb action. And Blue's Treb is actually doing some work right now. Is Red now Trebbing for the tre versus the Treb as well? Yup. Bad news for Blue. Blue seems frozen. Blue doesn't have the army count. Blue's really focused on walls, but Red took the middle. So honestly, like, having played this map the other day, myself, at a slightly different ELO than this, and now having seen this, if you're playing coastal, guys, you really gotta pay attention to the middle. There's hills, there's choke points, there's stones and golds there, and fast imperial trebuchets is how my game ended. Um... You know, just siege pushing with obviously some army support through the middle seems like it's really solid regardless. I'd even want to consider a sieve with a really good bombard cannon. Because that can help in these scenarios. I thought maybe if red would have uh, been castle dropped, that red would have had some concerns. It's been all blue though. <clears throat> uh, or sorry, it's been all red. Red's had the control blue. Had a good game plan here, right? But was never really able 
to fully take the middle because of the aggression from red. There's just so many knights here. The only upgrade they have is bloodlines to take them up to 120 HP, but you really don't want to be fighting with unupgraded knights versus helps. You don't want to. Where's the Treb? Okay, Treb goes down, and that's probably why the red went in there in the first place. And now red's going to back away. Yeah, Khmer do get Cavalier. It's clear to me here that Red is a player that doesn't know how important Blacksmith upgrades can be. Yeah, you get fully upgraded Cavalier. So the combination's pretty good. Again, the nice thing about just Castle Age Ballista Elephants is they still have 10 attack. They're pretty good. They don't take that much damage from Halb, so you do take some, but... Red's got a big old unit mass here. He's got 42 army. It's only three for blue. I think blue's going to have to end up calling it here. I guess blue's holding on because the castle's still up. But once the castle's down, and it will be down soon, villagers won't be able to repair. This is definitely a GG moment. An interesting map. Probably not a map that blue enjoyed too much. And I think red came in here with a game plan. Red said control the middle with towers follow it up with some army and then you know get trebs going <laughs> blue's still just like well we're not walled yet <laughs> i love how this takes priority oh we're not walled where are these hills gonna go you're losing the middle right so you want to do something different this is peaceful over here very, very different than the rest of the things that Blue is experiencing currently. Okay, Blue's going to get his wood upgrade. Also research chemistry. So, I don't know. Might be thinking about some cannons if he knows that that, uh, that chemistry allows him to get access to bombard cannons. Red still massing a big force. Red still thinking about continuing to trudge forward here. Red has eight trebuchets with three more on the way. And there goes Blue. Oh, man. And she's going to meet up with them. She was the scout. She was like, we will meet you at the 47th minute. Near the dry sand. The dry sand. <laughs> what if it rains? <laughs> well, then we cancel. <laughs> then we do it the next day. Is Blue going to straight up just go AFK here? It almost seems like Blue doesn't have a plan. Okay, no, here comes Blue. Dude, I so want him to castle drop the back. There is a chance, okay? If he could get a castle up here without Red noticing, he could kill 20 or so villagers. I mean, Red re should be pushing right now, but he's sure taking his sweet old time. Okay, there are the Vils. Oh, sneaking around. Is there a hole back there? There is a hole? Wait, no. Well, there is, but it's not, like, one you can run through. Dude. <laughs> it, okay. My guess is this. I think Blue wants to just survive as long as possible, because that's part of the fun. And I think that he's going to make Red try and hunt him down. That's my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. No, don't click fish, because then they're going to go drop off the food somewhere. Oh, it's a lumber camp. All right. Well, there go the Halbs. Halbs have not done much in this game. Telling you, man, Ballista Elephants are insane. Really hard to kill this unit. Answer would be a lot more Halbs. Yeah, and there's, there's so many Trebs here. The, the Red has listened to my lessons of do not trickle Treb. 11 Trebuchets? Holy. I found out yesterday in a tournament that Chakrams are really good against Trebuchets, and it, when you click Trebuchets towards a building, they line up naturally, and the Chakrams just shred them. So keep that in mind if you're ever up against the Chakram and the Gujaras. But I mean, come on, Blue. Doesn't look like he has a market, so he can't actually buy a castle. Where's the stone miners at? Is he out of stone miners now? Wait, didn't he have stone miners somewhere else? Guys, how much is it to make a Frank castle again? Isn't it 488? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. 
He's in 484. He doesn't have the stone. Again, he's played 2,600 games. Oh, more transport chips. <laughs> Having to do this when the game is bugged and you can't ungarrison properly and when you're already losing this game badly is so sad. Oh, look at that. Red's going to get redemption for some reason. So we can convert the opponent's buildings, maybe? All right, there we go. I think if I know blue, blue's going to try and find a stone somewhere. Any free stone that can be taken here? He wants to build a castle, for sure. Looking for stone. Doesn't see stone. Probably still looking. But you got to get the wood upgrade for these villagers. That's important. No market. Hasn't had a market all game. These villagers are loaded up. More transport ships on the way. Oh, we're going to have careening, though, so more can fit inside the transports. <laughs> With five transport ships, Blue could have his entire economy and transport ships in a second. And then also his army. <laughs> he needs six transports, and everything he has is garrisoned. But I guess transports also count... Wait, do transports count as eco, or do they count as military? I guess they count as military, because we have eight actual military, and then we have five transports. Hmm, interesting. Red's having fun, man. Red's having fun. Red doesn't want to rush it. This is an enjoyable game for a lower-ranked player. I'm worried Blue thinks that part of the fun is waiting for the opponent to find him and kill him. And I'm worried that he's just going to hide. But I, I'm gonna going to just stick to that he maybe has a plan. It feels like these villagers have been put on notice to evacuate at any point. They know that they're going to have to do it soon, but they haven't been given the call yet. Alright, so there's seven going this way. You know someone's trying to hide if they go into the corner. If it's a corner transport, they're just trying to waste time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, what about the next shipment? Come on, Blue. <laughs> Come on. All right. Can we speed up a little bit? We'll, we'll go two times speed, considering this game feels over. It's still the eco count isn't that crazy. Okay. More houses. Wait, wait, wait. Has he located the stone? I hope he found the stone. He's, he's headed to the stone, right? Or is this guy just going to be in the southern corner? Keep in mind, he's got to do other stuff. So it's like, okay, we put them there. We got to remember where they are. Getting fast fire ship now. Interesting. Okay, now these villagers have to go into a transport ship. We're fishing now. We're fish booming. Let's go. Yeah, Red is no interest in killing this guy. Red might be saving up for spies or something, for all we know. Both players... Like, you cannot look at this and say that either player is dragging the game out more than the other, really. Red is the army to kill Blue and isn't doing it. It's taking a sweet old time. And Blue's taking a sweet old time dying. That's just how it is. Okay, but this is maybe where all these villagers get the evacuation notice. You're starting to lose the buildings that are right next to your villagers. You might want to run. He's making more houses. Red's made more towers. There are these villagers. I thought maybe they'd come find this stone, because I think he wants a castle. Okay, there, there's the army. The army's heading to the north now. We have Galleon being researched. Okay, are the villagers going to make a run for it now? Red has creeped forward a full 10 tiles. And he's crept forward 11 tiles with the Cavalier. Big moves, and Blue sees it, and Blue's going to get out of here. Oh my god, I called it. And again, transport bug, super annoying. He's going to mine the stone. 
He's gonna mine the freaking stone for a castle. Let's go! Let's go! It took him long enough, but he's got it. I never doubted. So now he's gonna get that four stone he needs so he can finally afford one. Where's his army? Oh, he's been found over here! Oh no! Red found him! No! No! He lost his army! They sunk! They can't swim. Did you see how small the legs are for those Bombard Cannons? They can't freaking swim. Okay, well, that, that's a plan ruined, but I'm sure Blue can be more creative. Anyways, these villagers have died. Um, I think Blue probably just looked over here and thought, crap. Okay, plan ruined. So now it's on these villagers to build that castle. Okay, here we go. Big moment. Having fun. Where are we headed? We are headed towards the corner. Got it. Okay, is there another shipment? Yup. Okay, we got some halves. And we got some vills. These vills have been forgotten. Or no, they haven't. There's a shipment on the way. Or, or a transport ship on the way. Okay. Now, they are losing their homes, but they can't live there anyways, so they prefer that over the enemy living there, I guess. Because the enemy can even garrison inside the houses, being the Khmer. Like, that's cheating. All right. Spies is 200 gold per enemy villager. Would still be too expensive for Red to research spies. Blue does not want to call it. And I think he is going to just try and hide in the corners until the opponent defeats him. But he's also still trying stuff. Also, gotta love the bug. Where anytime there's a ballista or an onager in the left corner of the map, there's tons of noise. That happens in the game, by the way. It's not a capture age thing. Because I heard it once. I was, play I was playing a game and I heard it and I thought there was something coming for me. It was really confusing. Okay. Did Red just try and get Spies? No, Red still has gold. Spies would still be pretty expensive. We have fast fire ships on the way. Red is dropping a castle here. Next to the relic. Red is dropping a castle here. Red pretty much sees everything. And Blue knows that he's been spotted. It's been an interesting day for low elo, man. <laughs> the blue's got to make a whole line of houses so he could make navy again. I think the only reason he's making navy is because he knows that that is what will keep him in this game. Oh, convert the transport, Red. Convert the transport. Convert it. Red, convert it. Okay, blue's out of here. Left this guy behind, but no one liked him anyways. This is the guy that doesn't wear deodorant in the group. No one wants to be on the ship with that. All right, now, Red, you know what your opponent's doing, okay? So, you know, maybe at this point you could make some ships. Just a thought. Your opponent has docks. You don't. You can see, you know, the, the transport ships here. You could see all this stuff. So just an idea, maybe make a dock. Is that a mining camp converted? It was. Okay. Here comes the cav. And Blue's just trying to make more houses for Pop Space. Black Sight even has a cannon galley in here. Something's going to wake Red up and make Red make some Navy. But for now, Red's just slowly destroying all the houses. Calling it, this game goes on for over two hours. You think so? Uh, I could see it. Depends on how Red wants to play it. It feels like the almost the legend of I sit where like you surround the opponent with cannon galleons and eventually they run out of resources. Only it's like it doesn't really work well here on coastal because <laughs> they're gonna have way more resources than you if you don't have middle control. Now red probably oh Trebs just hit the cannon galleon in the dome. Red probably doesn't really have the experience with water. But, okay, Blue just leaves the game. All right, well, Blue didn't wait till he was defeated, so I'll give him that. Anyways, GG, well played from Red. Red is a really good strat, honestly. It's a really good strat. Take the middle, like, lock down the middle with towers. 
follow it up with an attack. For blue, he cleared up the towers, but he didn't he didn't uh, have the follow-up. Remember that moment where red was making the castle and blue stayed at home? That was the moment where blue could have won the game. Uh, there was also time maybe for blue to prioritize a castle here and make treps with the faster Imperial Age. We didn't see either of those things from blue. I don't think blue played significantly worse. I just think that red played towards the middle and the treps, which became very important here. So, uh, anyways, KD, 93 to 20, pretty good for red. Nice little game where red collected double the amount of resources as well, because the last portion of that game, obviously, blue had no chance. So, GG.